Hey DF team, with the recent lacklustre D uh, GPU releases, it got me thinking, it was a long thinking given I am <laughs> late one week, which GPU of the past has given you the feel, now that is a quality product. Uh, might be my rose tinted glasses, but my ATI 4870 was one of those, well priced, fighting in the high end spectrum, provided proper heating to my room. <laughs> I feel like recent times makes me choose either longer shelf life, a uh, bit of more memory, or feature set RT DLSS. I mean, that is basically the AMD slash NVIDIA divide at the moment, which is AMD a, a, a really sort of um, a delivering more memory, whereas NVIDIA isn't. But NVIDIA actually has higher end features and a vision for the future of gaming that arguably AMD doesn't really. But which was the last GPU that got you thinking this is actually a really... Uh, amazing product, Alex. Really amazing product. I mean, I, I want to say in terms of I didn't buy one when it came out, but I did think the GTX 970 was ridiculous. Um, right. Yeah. When it did come out. So and, until the memory controversy. Yeah, the memory. Which yeah, kind that of you know, was like, nothing at the time, really. It it was really nothing for the period titles at the time and even for a few years in the future it, that 3.5 was fine for the resolutions that people were playing at and all these things um mm. and especially if you dialed in like lower than ultra settings in most games you were getting a ridiculous experience for that money at at launch um i thought that was an amazing gpu but since then there's no, there hasn't been a really like showstopper card. I guess the GTX 1080 and RTX 3080 had a little bit of this. And I think a lot of RX 6800 XT owners are very, very happy at the moment um, because their card seems to have had a nice tail life and it has a lot of things the new cards have for the most part. Um, but ever since the GTX 970, I wouldn't say there hasn't been a card that just floored me. Okay. Uh, I think 1080 Ti was, was, was a classic personally. Mm -hmm. uh, 3080 cheap uh, yeah. I think you know, when it hit it was quite seismic because the performance was that good um, but that, yeah anything above 699 it's really difficult to actually start justifying yeah, yeah it's like yeah right I, th I would say the 4090 did blow me away actually but yeah I agree it, it has to when you're charging performance <laughs> when you're charging yeah. 1599 for it <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. That's the that's the, like I was trying to think of like the price because forty forty eight seventy was is a famous one. So like there's a famous price performance awesome card, mm -hmm. but I, the, the forty ninety is a whole different tier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep, uh, yep. John, any thoughts on this one? I mean, newer stuff, no. But I would also raise the eighty eight hundred GT as like yep. a true classic. Like Absolutely. that thing was just an amazing value, and it worked so well for so long like you could pretty much play most of that generation's games on an 8800 yeah. gt which is awesome mm -hmm. easily 9800 like pro as well of course is a classic Nin yeah uh, yes yes well the 9700 pro is what i had but yeah the 9700 pro and 9800 pro were both absolutely amazing in that regard uh i would also say the g4 6800 when that hit the 6800 yeah. gt was like exceptionally awesome for that period um before that though I mean, the Voodoo 2. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, Voodoo, Voodoo 2. 2 was basically yeah. a flawless product when it came out. Like, good price, lots of cards to choose from, and it just did exactly what it was supposed to do, and it did it really freaking fast. And nobody else had a product on that level at the time. Okay. Right. But that's, yeah, that's a long time ago. <laughs>